Let's delve once more into the dark and distant past in search of strange and wondrous archaeological discoveries that shed new light on history. These remarkable finds are scattered across the globe and span the ages, yet they all share one thing in common. They are truly incredible. Let's dive right into the discoveries. As part of the HS2 archaeology program in England, archaeologists from two different universities have collaborated to excavate a water mill near Buckingham in Buckinghamshire. The site was found to have Anglo-Saxon origins, as recorded in the Domesday Book, a manuscript record of the Great Survey of England and Wales in 1086, commissioned by William the Conqueror. The excavations also revealed prehistoric occupation, including a possible ring ditch and a Mesolithic mace head, as well as evidence that the water mill was used from the 13th century to the post-medieval period. The mill structures in the post-medieval period were designed to funnel water to the mill wheel, indicated by substantial structures with a wide funnel that suggests there was a large volume of water here. However, the surviving mill race had a gentle gradient, which might be due to modern ditch management after the mill became obsolete. The first modern-day depictions of the mill can be found on 17th century maps, but it fell into disuse by 1825 and was eventually demolished by the 1940s. The archaeological remains, including the bypass channel, mill race, and outflow pond, were still found to be present on site during the excavations. Africa is generally regarded as the cradle of human life, so when archaeologists say they found the oldest cemetery in East Africa, it's a story worth hearing. The finding of the cemetery was confirmed in August 2018, close to Lake Turkana in Kenya. Experts believe that it was established by herders who lived around the lake more than 5,000 years ago. The location has been named the Lothagum North Pillar Site, which is every bit as accurate as it is unimaginative. At the center of the site is a platform almost exactly 100 feet in diameter, featuring a large funerary cavity. After around 700 years of constant use, the cemetery became completely full and was capped with stones before being topped with pillars. Further stone circles and cairns were then added around the platform for later burials. Scientists have been able to identify almost 600 individuals buried within the cavity, many of whom were buried with stone and mineral grave goods including colorful beads. It doesn't appear that any of the individuals were buried with any greater ceremony or grandeur than any of the others, indicating that there may not have been a strong hierarchy in this ancient society. In 2003, the Chiribon shipwreck was discovered off the coast of Chiribon, West Java, Indonesia. It's a shipwreck from the late 9th or 10th century containing a huge amount of Chinese yu ware and is evidence of the opulence of the Maritime Silk Road trading network in Southeast Asia. The discovery happened when fishermen started finding Chinese ceramics in their nets, which they reported to local authorities. Then, between 2004 and 2006, a private company recovered over 250,000 artifacts, including ceramics, glassware, gemstones, ingots, and metals. The sunken ship was around 100 feet long and had undergone several repairs before it sank for unknown reasons. The cargo stowage pattern implies that most of it came from southern China, with stops made in the southern Sumatran ports of the Srivijayan Federation. Some Chinese coins from the cargo helped experts pinpoint the sinking to around the year 970. The artifacts were auctioned in 2006, and about 10% of the 76,000 recovered artifacts were kept by the Indonesian government for a museum. That low percentage of retention happened despite the importance of the discovery, which saw experts, historians, and archaeologists urge the government to preserve more of the wreck's contents. An enormous Hanseatic League ship was found close to the Estonian capital of Tallinn in April 2022. This has always been an excellent place to look for old ships as Tallinn Port is one of Northern Europe's oldest and was once a vital trade center connecting Viking Scandinavia to Rurik Novgorod. It's clear that the coastline has changed a little since then, though, as the 700-year-old ship was found beneath the modern city streets. The location was once the mouth of the Harshapia River, but the river no longer exists. The League ship is the largest shipwreck of its kind ever discovered 
and would once have been a cog ship working between Russia, Estonia, and England as part of a trade network. The Hanseatic League controlled the lion's share of maritime trade in this part of Europe during the medieval era, and vessels like this one were the reason why. When the Danish king Valdemar VI tried to go to war with them and reclaim trade supremacy, the Hanseatic League humiliated him by forcing him to sign a peace treaty that gave the Danes even lower sea trade profits than they had before the war began. The entire ship will be removed and preserved, but the process could take years. The Iron Lion of Kangzhou, also known as the Sea Guard Howler, is an impressive cast iron sculpture located in Kangzhou City, Hebei Province, China. Created in 953 during the later Zhao Dynasty, it's the oldest and largest iron cast artwork in China. It used to carry a basin-shaped lotus throne with a bronze statue of the Bodhisattva Mensch Usri on the lotus sea. However, the bronze statue was removed in antiquity, probably so the bronze could be reused. The sculpture was created using a piece molding technique where a clay model is made and covered with an outer layer of clay, which is then cut into pieces and removed before it dries. The iron was poured between the outer and inner mold. Over the years, the sculpture has sustained damage with its tail lost by 1603 and its snout and belly damaged by a storm in 1803. Listed as a national key cultural relic in 1961, the Iron Lion was remounted on a stone pedestal in 1984, but its legs were filled with a sulfate compound that caused cracks to appear. Restoration work was carried out in 2000, and the sculpture remains a cultural icon in Kangzhou. The sarcophagus of Lucius Cornelius Scipio Barbatus, a Roman consul in 298 BCE, is a solid volcanic rock burial coffin that was once placed in the tomb of the Scipios and is now located in the Vestibolo Quadrato of the Pio Clementine Museum in the Vatican Museum's complex. We know who the sarcophagus was made for because his name is inscribed on the lid, along with an epitaph written in Old Latin Saturnian meter, the letters of which were once painted red. The bones of Barbatus, along with the gold signet ring taken from his finger bone, were removed from the sepulture in the excavations of 1780 and initially went to the Vatican along with everything else of value in the tomb. Pope Pius VI later gifted the bones to a Venetian senator who reinterred them in an elaborate sepulture in the gardens of his villa near Padua. The gold ring was gifted to a French scholar who later sold it to the Earl of Beverly. Today the ring is in the collection of the Dukes of Northumberland at Alnoit Castle making it the only ancient Roman ring that can be traced back to its original owner. The Sabarov head is a marble sculpture from ancient Greece that dates back to around 550 to 525 BCE. It's a Kuros head named after Peter Alexandrovich Sabarov, an ancient Greek sculpture and antiquities collector. These days you'll find it in the Antikin Samlung Berlin, but it's believed to be originally from Attica or Aegina. Alternatively, some people think that they may have come from Korea in Asia Minor. This head is likely from a larger statue, and it's unique because of its beard and hair design. Most men in Greek statues from this era had long hair, but the beard was a typical feature in archaic sculptures. The way the mustache is separate from the beard on the cheeks and chin is rare for Greek sculptures and gives the head an exotic look. This head is closer to a portrait than any other surviving work from archaic Greece except for the boxer relief in Athens. An optical 3D scanner was used to get a cast copy of the Sabarov head to be studied at Heidelberg University, which was analyzed using the GigaMesh software framework. This analysis indicated asymmetrical balance and a slight tilt of the head, which indicates that the head was once part of an equestrian statue. The Broad Wall, an ancient defensive structure located in Jerusalem's Old City, is a testament to the strategic prowess of King Hezekiah during the late 8th century BCE. Israeli archaeologist Naman Avagad discovered the wall during excavations in the 1970s. The Broad Wall, as the name suggests, is a massive structure, 21 feet thick, with an unbroken length of 200 feet. It reaches a height of 10 feet in some places, making it an impressive feat of engineering and design. 
Before Avogad's dig, it was thought that the city limits during this era were defined by the fortified hill running south of the Temple Mount, known as the City of David. However, the discovery of the Broad Wall showed that the city had expanded westward by the late 8th century BCE. This expansion may have been motivated by Sennacherib's campaign in Judah, which put the city at risk of attack. References to the wall can be found in Nehemiah 3.8 and Isaiah 22.9 and 10, providing insight into the historical and cultural significance of this defensive structure. The broad wall remains standing as a testament to the ingenuity and skill of its ancient builders. There's classical music, and then there's this. Taken from cuneiform inscriptions found on clay tablets in Ugarit, northern Syria, these written musical compositions represent the oldest known songs in the world, dating back almost three and a half thousand years. Fragments of many songs were found during excavation work at Ugarit's royal palace during the 1950s, but only one of them, the Hurrian hymn to Nikal, is complete. Modern composers have attempted to interpret the music with varying degrees of success, it's possible to understand the notes, but we'll never know how the composer intended them to be played. Another of the clay tablets contained lyrics for the hymn and also detailed information on how musicians should tune their harps. Translating the lyrics into English is almost impossible because we've never been able to decipher the Hurrian language completely, but we can work out enough to know that it's a religious song offering thanks to Nikal, who was the wife of the moon god according to Hurrian belief. You can currently see the tablets in the National Museum of Damascus. The Croix Tepic, also known as the Tapetum Concordiae, is a tapestry owned by the University of Greifswald in Germany. It's considered a unique testimony to the cultural and historical significance of the Reformation era due to its size and quality. Commissioned by Duke Philip I of Pomerania in 1554 and made by Dutch image weaver Peter Hymans in Sissersen or Jasenitz using a bass lice technique, the tapestry features a depiction of the Duke and his family with the family of his wife Maria of Saxony on the occasion of their wedding. The Protestant reformers Martin Luther Philip Melanchthon and Johann Bergenhagen are also featured in the background representing a wish for unity and faith within Lutheranism amid disputes after the Augsburg Interim of 1548. Upon the death of the Duchess Anna von Pommern, the tapestry was donated to the University of Greifswald in 1681 on the condition that it be displayed in the university's large lecture hall every 10 years on the anniversary of her passing. Today, the tapestry is on loan from the University of Greifswald to the Pommersches Landes Museum and it was entered into Germany's Register of National Valuable Cultural Assets in 2014. It's sometimes said that good things come in small packages. Perhaps this tiny Thracian tomb is the proof. The Hellenistic era tomb was found close to the town of Rizovo in Bulgaria in 2018. The correct way to refer to it is to call it a beehive tomb, known to the ancient Greeks as a tholos. Based on the style of the tomb and the materials used in its construction, experts are fairly confident that it's around 2,300 years old. Only two miles from the site of this discovery is the much larger Kazanlik tomb, which is about 100 years older. That tomb is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Is there a connection between the tombs? It's certainly possible. They're the only two beehive tombs ever found in Bulgaria that still have their domes fully intact. Given how brutally the tomb was forced open by raiders in the distant past, the fact the dome survived is remarkable. This part of Bulgaria is famous for its high concentration of Thracian tombs. Some of the country's historians believe there may be as many as 1,500 unexplored tombs still waiting to be discovered. When the ancient Romans needed to keep things cool, they placed them in a fridge. That may seem like a surprising thing to say, but it's true. It's just that the fridges the Romans used didn't look much like the fridges you're picturing in your mind. An ancient Roman fridge was recently discovered at the legionary fortress of Nove in Pamatnasite, Bulgaria. The fortress was built in the year 86, and the fridge dates to this time. In form and function, it's a container made of ceramic plates that's been carefully recessed under the fort's floor, allowing it to be used for food storage and to keep its contents relatively cool. 
It wouldn't have been anything like as effective as a modern refrigerator with all the benefits of electric cooling, but it would still have allowed food to be kept for longer than it would have lasted if it were kept in the open or stored above ground. The so-called fridge was covered by an equally ancient bowl when it was discovered. Experts think the bowl was probably used as a way of warding off insects. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.